Okay. I think I had something like this. Uh, close that one. And, uh, okay, so we've got, oh, I have to connect the digital pins as well. All right. Um,
Okay. So these are outputs. I've got two through five. those um If we're at the end of the multiplexer, print an E, otherwise a comma. Read mux gets a channel number. So each time we want to read one of these values, we iterate over this array and write the value mux at channel do, 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 in each one of these. And then we read the analog pane and then turn the value. And we should put a delay one somewhere. Maybe. I guess I'll put it here. All right. So actually let's do a delay 300 and then open the serial port this for now. Except for the fact that the last two values are zero for some reason. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's because there's no photo cells plugged in there. That would explain it. There we go. That one has up. And, and this one. Okay, so the first one's covered up. That's now 400 something. And I'm gonna make this faster. Uh, 
let's only put the delay here. So once we get to a new line, this maybe will be more readable. Yeah, uh, I should probably make this visible. Okay, so we cover up the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Cool. Oh man, this is cool. All right. Let's do this and this. All right, now we're going right, to, we have uploaded that to our Arduino, and let's quit that. Okay. I bet we could use a faster rate here if we wanted to, but you know, I, eventually when there's 256, I'm going to want this thing to be running as fast as possible. We'll go with a uh, 11, 115, for now. Oh yeah, I had a, had this in a file that I want to get, uh, Okay, so we got a tdef, we got an empty array, values, uh, loop. Uh, read the next value, if it's nil, do nothing. Uh, yeah, okay, so if it's not alphabetic, means if it's a number or a comma and this may not be necessary, but if it's printing, that's fine. They're all printing. Uh, add that. Uh, we add it as a string. Uh, so let me just think about this. So let's say we get the first number, which is a nine. So a character. So we get a 57. It checks as ASCII is alpha. No, that's true. Is print. Of course, that is true as well. So then we say Arduino. 
data which equals this empty array equals Arduino data dot add um, 57 dot as ASCII dot as string. So it adds the string nine to this array. And let's say we get like uh, this number and this number, and then we get a comma, which is 44. Right? So we, we add the string, the comma, to the array. Then let's get some more numbers. Oops. It's not at all what I wanted. And then, if we get an alpha character, we do this to it. And I think I, I did this earlier, so... Yes, okay. So, what are we doing here? Um, Arduino data is an array containing uh, strings, each of which is an individual character. And we do... Uh, we take the string, the left bracket, and we concatenate it with this array and end it with a right bracket. And so, dot cat list. What does this do? Just want to remind myself what cat list does. concatenate the string with the following arguments. So if we say something like foo.cat list, we give it the array b, a, r, all as strings, we get foobar. Yeah, so it takes all these strings and uh, individual strings and then concatenates them together. So we actually get this array. And then what's cool is if we have the string 234, comma, 567 uh, with a closed bracket, right? This is this is a string, yeah. Um close some stuff here. Close, close, close. So we can't like um you know, do math with it. So if we say x equals this, can't say, you know, x plus 2. Oh, we can, but it's not the same thing, right? But if we have the array, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, plus 2, then it behaves like an array of integers, which it actually is. But we can do interpret. And this is a way of evaluating code as if you were to run the stuff in the string itself. So this turns a string containing valid code into the result of the interpretation of that code, if you actually use the interpreter to run that code. Hey, Crazy Elision, how's it going? Uh, so that's good. That looks like what we want, actually. So let's close this for a second. Um, and then we reset the array. So this is that the name of my uh uh i think it is i'm just going to copy and paste it just to be sure Okay, so that is running, and let's take a look at our 
Arduino data. And not that one, values. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's great. That is 16 values coming from my 16 light sensors. All right. All right, so let's do something fun. Um, do something fun here. Uh, all right, make some space. Let's do like a, a GUI representation of what's actually going on here. <laughs> I know, I did it. It works. Uh, I'm 1 16th done. Uh, that's so exciting. I'm so excited that worked. Ah, oh, yes, okay. So what I'm thinking about doing now is I'm just gonna make uh, 16 composite views. Um, uh, so we'll do arg n, uh, no, 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 collect. We wanna collect, actually, overwrite these uh these values so we'll do composite view <laughs> uh just it's gonna get even cooler we just got to get through this composite view on the window and they will be uh 20 over 20 down uh it goes over first so this has to be 20 plus uh, n plus 1, n plus 1 times 20, n, n times 20. I, I don't know. We'll figure this out. I can't, I can never do this in my head. Um, let's make it uh, 50, make all these 50, 50, uh, 50 comma 50, and we're going to have it be dot background color dot rand just want to see this first okay so i'm just i'm i'm making color dot rand so i can actually see what's going on here um but those are too big so we'll do this we'll do 40 40 40 40 40 still too big uh let's do and over here and down almost these gotta make this window a little bigger I guess uh, 25 25 window dot new bounds wrecked uh, 0 0 uh, 800, 200. What's the problem now? I need another parenthesis. Too big. Do window.close all. I know these are popping up off stream, but uh, I'm going to hopefully I can change the boundary so that it actually does show up on stream. Just bear with me here. And so if I do, can I do this? Do, there we go. Okay, so now it's showing up on the right screen. Okay, so I, uh, I'm i making this uh, window and just the colors are random so that we can actually see them because if we don't do that, then they're just, they just have clear backgrounds, I guess. Um, so we're going to set their background to be white. Or can we, let's do color.new. What if we just do one, the red? Um, 
one 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 will be white. Okie dokie. So what I was thinking is we'll make some routine or T def or something. Uh change colors. It's just gonna use the values from the sensors. Are those still chugging along? I just love looking at those values. Oh yeah, there it's, I love it, it's just running in the background, just constantly updating. I wonder what my activity monitor is like right now. Uh, as OBS is hogging everything. But SuperGlider's fine. I don't know if that's accurate. <laughs> I don't think you can use 110% of the CPU. Everything seems to be running just fine. I don't know, at least from my end. Okay. Um, so this is going to be a loop, and we are going to uh, say views dot do arg view pass in the instance of the view because we've filled an array called views with these composite views. So each view we're going to say uh, view dot background set the color to be, uh, maybe we should, let's do var um, um, RGB. Uh, and this is just gonna, I mean, it's always gonna be the same. We're just gonna do a black to white scale thing. There's probably a, oh, you know, we can do color dot gray, I think, right? Uh, what if we do this? Some um, comment this out. We're not done. And if we do zero, yeah, and 0.5. Okay, perfect. So we'll just use one value. Gray val. Okay, so gray val is going to be, we're going to map that value here. So I'm seeing like, can't get that one quite down to 400, but uh, the last one, no, it's about, uh, about the same, I guess. Let's just say the minimum is 400. I mean, we don't have to go all the way to black or white. Uh, so we'll say gray val equals uh, values dot collect and we're just going to say i dot lin lin right, it says 400 all the way to you know 950 onto a value of 0 to 1 so that becomes our gray value and then we say color dot gray uh, Gray val. And I think we need to use defer because this is going to, I don't know what clock this is going to play on, but I think when we do dot play, we can tdef here, task proxy. Yeah, the clocks, we might as well just say app clock. It's a lower priority clock and that can handle, that's allowed to do things like, um, adjust the gray value. Uh, oh, oh, I forgot the wait time. That's not good. All right, did I manage to copy that? I did. All right, so we're gonna, yeah, I hung the interpreter. Maybe, maybe I can just uh, quit the interpreter. All right, now let's see that. I forgot to put a wait time in my loop, so everything crashed. Now we have to start over, but that's okay. Um, okay, we'll do this. We'll do this. I forgot a wait time, rookie mistake. Um, and 
let's save this. I might actually just re-push the Arduino code, even though it might not strictly be necessary. Uh, where are we going? Arduino files, light matrix. All right. So, and I'm gonna just change this delay time briefly. Uh, push that again. Serial monitor. And I'm not doing a new line, but it looks like that's, I'm gonna assume that's working. Quit. Super Collider, Open Recent, this guy. Okay, and now we'll play that. And now we should see, yes. Um, what is this command line? I failed. Well, it's working now, so that's good. We can shrink this so that it's on one line. Yeah. So let's just see. There's the last one. Covering up some of these last ones here. Okay, I'm also noticing the values do get fairly low. So... So crazy, I... Uh, for most of the stream I was just connecting what was going on here on, on my camera. I, I have a multiplexer and I have 16 photo cells and they're all going to the multiplexer. Then I wrote some Arduino code that uh, samples each of these values and sends it in a sequence to the Arduino that's coming into my computer. And that's what's in the Super Collider post window right now. So now what I'm trying to do is just visualize it by making a, a window with some grayscale squares on it. Okay, before I forget, uh, let's put a wait time here. So it goes in the loop. So we'll say 0 0.05 dot. Uh, let's do, we can, it can handle, uh, we'll start with 5.05. Uh, We're going to wait there. And yeah, no problem. And we're going to lower this also. Okay, I'm going to save this and run it. And that's not working. I wonder why. Uh, no error messages. Doesn't seem like the interpreter is stuck anywhere. What did I do wrong? Uh, okay, let's think about this. To arg view, let's stop this tdef. Let's see if we can do it manually. Um, views, yeah. View uh, at zero, dot background. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to change the colors. So if we have like values, I think I just did something silly in here. This should be working. Okay, so we have a loop. We're, pl we're playing this TDEF. We have a loop. We iterate over an array of 16 composite views and pass the instance of each view in. So we start with the zeroth composite view. We declare a value. Uh, gray val equals values dot collect. What if we do this? Let's just evaluate this. 
yeah, it's a bunch of values and they're all fairly high. And then if I cover up these low ones, those go low. See, that looks great. I want to use those values. Um, oh, okay, I see it. I see it. Um, index. Grayval at index. Grayval is an array of 16 floats. And so we need to set it. So it's, I'm setting it with, I'm just sending it. Uh, okay, I think this should work. Right, what I was doing is I was setting, using the, the argument passed to the gray method, an array of 16 values, but it just needs one value, not an array. So I'm guessing if it gets an array, it just, it's the same thing as getting a zero or something. So I think this should work. Oh my god. Yes. That is the coolest thing. I need to turn the light off. Let me uh, it's change this uh, wait time to be even faster. So now it's a little bit more responsive. That is pretty cool, right? Uh, hey, it works. And um, uh, let's see. I don't quite get, get, they get pretty dark if I really mash my hand down on them. Let's see, I'll do two hands at once. Thank you. Thanks, Crazy. This is very exciting. I'm very excited this is working. My hopes and dreams are coming true. Uh, yeah, a lot of sunlight coming in through the window, so I can't really shut everything off, but and turn that light off. So there's just one of them. Oh man, I could do this all day. I should make a sound example. You know, why not? I should do a little bit of sound. Um, because that would be fun. Mm, what should we do? I think I'll just do something simple and uh, let's make a, um, a harmonic series of 16 overtones. Uh, how do we do this? S dot boot. <clears throat> yeah, I I could I could make it so that if uh each sensor is is dark enough it'll uh trigger. Yeah, let's let's do it that. Let's make a little arpeggio. A little, so if if uh well, I'm going to do Casey's suggestion here and uh if I if I cover it up enough, if it gets dark enough, that will uh be a trigger to uh play a play a note so all right uh 16 dot collect i uh, will call this synths equals 16 dot collect um pass in the number so 0 through 15 and we will make uh a function var sig and sig equals sign os dot ar oh you know what i want to do let's uh make an array of midi notes here so let's start at 48 um
How many is that? Thirteen. Okay, uh, mm, mm, mm. that is sixteen. So we're gonna say end dot midi cps zero, and we'll just we'll just keep that as is. We're gonna make um, a percussive envelope dot kr zero gate. We need a gate here. Uh, and then sig equals sig times n times point two dot play. So what this should do is make an array of synths on the server. And now we should be able to do something like synth. I'm going to turn up my OBS volume a little bit here. Synth at zero dot set gate one. Boo. Synths, not synth. Oh, I didn't make them stereo. That's going to bug me. Uh, synths dot collect dot free synths not synth I'm so used to typing synth uh, okay there we go uh, all right and so now they should be stereo okay and I think like if we send this 0.5, nothing happens. 0.9, 1. Yeah, it's got a so zero. Oh, it's it's with positive, right? It's a positive value. So a five, that's the same thing. Negative value is fine. So it's a non-positive to positive transition. It's probably pretty quiet. But we can do another one, you know, at 13. Okay, so that's all good and fine. So those are running. We're just going to let those live on the server. All right, there they are, all 16 of them. And now we just need to change this tdef so that in addition to updating the color, um, we are going to uh, let's see. Let's make a new variable trig trig equals values dot collect guy i dot lin lin so we're going to map these from let's say 100 to 950 now if they're low they're going to be dark but we, so we actually want that to be the trigger so we'll say um uh the lowest value we just need it to be positive to trigger a synth so we might say like 0 0.2 to uh, Uh, negative 0.8. Let's take a look at what those values look like. And so they're all negative. And if I then, that one's still not quite positive. So maybe I'll make that 0.5. I'm going to just do like minus one to one. I just want to be able to, I don't want to have to cover it like crazy in order to get a sound. So now, yeah, this value right here, that's, that's above zero enough, I think. So let's just try that and let's just confirm once again that uh, 
I can also adjust my light source here, but uh, okay, yeah, they're all negative. And so we update the background and we say synths. Uh, use that do. Oh, okay, we can just do, um, yeah, synths at index dot set gate. Do we set the gate uh, to trig? at zero uh index at index trig at index so it's just gonna we've, we've mapped our sensor values onto values that are suitable for envelope triggers somewhere between you know negative one and one and if they're above zero they're gonna it's gonna trigger a sound if it's below it's gonna reset the trigger so that it can be triggered again i think that's all we need to do and it's gonna do this yeah it's gonna be constantly updating 100 times a second so let's um, do this again and start this. Uh, oh, we got an error here. Uh, error expecting blah, blah, blah. What did I do wrong? Something. Ah, there's no semicolon. That is why. There's no semicolon. Okay. Um, all right, let's try that again. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's an instrument. You can play it. Uh, I'm going to change this to be minus 0.3. Oh, that's too high. So with something like this, <laughs> oh, I don't think I can play that. Do I have the right, if I had a, yeah, there's your ocarina of time. <laughs> Yeah, because my, my shadow is doing interesting things as well. I've got this, you know, it's, I'm, I'm covering them like they're sort of physical sensors, but they're, you know. I wonder if I can calibrate it so that my shadow is enough. Uh, uh, gate. Um, okay, tell you what, let's, let's, let's do, um, okay, I just want to see something real quick. So values. And if I cover it with my shadow, this last one here, 840 versus 729. Okay. So, and they're all above 800. So maybe I'll just say if, if it's less than 800, that's a trigger, right? So trig equals values.collect. And here, what we're going to do is if uh, i is less than 800, uh, 1, otherwise 0. Um, yeah, that's good. OK. So now it's just, just uh, now just, I can do this with my shadow. And now it's like a harp. <laughs> Man, that's fun. Let's 
still missing a few triggers. I think, I mean, what if we made it like kind of screaming fast here? It's, uh, I, I think this will be okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a finicky thing, I guess, you know? It's, uh, it's gonna require a lot of calibration, uh, and tweaking and, you know, the ambient light conditions are going to change it dramatically. So, um, but it works. It works. It definitely, definitely works. There's no question there. Uh, I should have made an argument for, um, uh, the frequency so I could all transpose them. Um, H. I do freak. Freak. No, I can't do that between an arg and a var statement. Freak equals n dot midi dps. Freak. Uh, you know what? I don't know if I feel like doing this. Maybe. Maybe. Ah, uh, sure. You know what? Why not? Let's just. This will be the last thing I do, and I might uh, call it a day. Yes, I know. No, not found. Thank you. Um. Okay, so then can I do something like um uh dot do uh arg n synths at i dot set freak n dot midi cps that's important, okay. So if I just do uh, plus one. That didn't work, it didn't work, it didn't work. Uh, oh, I think I can't do it this way here. Um, here's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna, I think this line is screwing it up. So we will stop. So we're going to say play args colon freak comma uh this is my train of thought here end up midi cps right so then we set it that way to initialize them so stop this Start this. I mean, you wouldn't need a bunch of photo cells to make a, a theremin. You just need one, right? And then, I mean, it's it's got tons of values, and then you would just use that as a frequency control, and then you have a a theremin. It would be pretty uh, ridiculous to make to recreate a theremin using, you know, two hundred fifty six photo cells. I mean. Uh, you know, you you can't do polyphony with a theremin or anything, but I don't know. I think yeah, you just need one, and then you go. Ooh, that's really that's all there is to it. Okay, so and then if I do this, yeah, so we can. I feel like I'm missing some triggers, so I'm gonna. It's gotta be less than 820. 810. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's go let's go back down. We can we can also do dot uh scramble dot do and put these back. So now Uh, 
Oh, let's free these again. What I, sh I shouldn't have it setting the gate. Well, I mean, yeah, I just, these node not found messages are annoying, but. Uh, and let's do one more thing. Uh, bus, sig, and. Uh, Um, reverb equals, uh, um, some reverb, whoa. Oh yeah, it's, it's still still alive. Uh, <laughs> one of them is like right on the threshold, and it's like, you know, re-triggering its envelope. Uh, this. What? Uh, oh, I need to make the bus first. Bus equals bus.audio s2. Then we can do this, I think. And then we need to free these and make them again. Do this. There is a, a much more elegant way than just constantly freeing them. That is kind of clipping. Do that. It's really sensitive now. Well, this makes me really excited. This is great progress. This thing's really coming along. It's gonna be a huge mess though when I'm all done. Like, just look at the uh, the wires. I'll go into this multiplexer. Then I gotta do another 16 going over here. Another 16 over here, over here. And then it's gonna go around like this. So, you know, from the middle, they're gonna sort of spread outward. So it's not gonna be like, stuff over here crisscrossing over here over here uh it's gonna be s kind of self-contained but it is also gonna be kind of chaotic okay i'm gonna go home and get some uh beauty r and r because i'm running a 5k tomorrow morning and i'm going camping next week and i'm really excited about those things so Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Anytime, anytime. Thanks for watching. See you later, Dan. Thank you, Casey. All right. that and I'll I'll push this up to GitHub and upload this video as soon as I can.
So thanks again, everybody. And I will see you all next time.